Father, as we bow before your magnificent throne of grace, thankful for this morning and for this opportunity that we have, one more time, 
to open our eyes and to give thanks unto you for this day and to be grateful for the blessings and the grace you have dis displayed unto us not only in your word by example but in our lives by uh, application in all the things that we do you have been so merciful and so patient with us we thank you so very much we ask that you would be with us as we have learned to do that which you have asked us to Amen. that we might be more perfect in doing so and have a desire to be Amen. more perfect in Amen. doing so Amen. each and every day Amen. that we come before you we thank you so very much that you give us the instruction to guide us on our way. You give us the time that we might practice and correct. You give us the opportunity that we might have the mindset to do and the desire to do your will. So we thank you so very much for all of your blessings and ask that you might be with those who are not yet with us who may still be on their way. We ask that you might be with those who are not with us this day because of some illness or some obstacle that may be in their way Amen. and we ask that you might be with each and every one of us who are here that we might be faithful doers of your word and not just listeners but desirous to apply and uh, guided to effectually do that which you have asked us to do it is in Christ's name that we pray and ask all amen amen 394 394 what a fellowship, what a joy divine on the everlasting earth. And what a blessedness, what a peace is mine on the everlasting arms of living lordly in heaven of and secure from all alarm I'm living in Engoling on the last in our and oh how sweet to walk in this pilgrim well in on the everlasting Part goes from day to day, in on the everlasting arms, only in the lordly, in and safe and secure. Yeah. He keeps 
me see and secure from all the people love and love Of me, what a hell I to tread. What a hell have I to fear when we're living on the everlasting. Oh, you know that I have blessed peace with. Written on the everlasting, and yes, we are leaning. We are leaning, leaning on Jesus. He keeps me safe and secure from all. Jesus will lead in all on Jesus, and we are leading in all the everlasting, and yes, we are leading on Jesus, we're leading, leaning on Jesus. He keeps me safe and secure from from all the love. People leaning on oh, Jesus, we're leaning, leaning on Jesus, and we are leaning, leaning on the heaven. Church, say amen. 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 It is certainly always a blessing. Amen. 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 It is certainly always a blessing to know that we're leaning on Jesus. Amen. That we're not in this life by ourselves. Amen. 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 Uh, it, it's often time we ought to ask ourselves, what do I have to dread? What do I have to fear if Jesus is on my side? Amen. amen. Uh, as rough and as tough as life can get, it's good to know that Jesus is on our sign. He's our leaning post. Amen. Amen, amen. amen and amen again. It is. The scripture reading for this morning is taken from the second chapter of the book of Acts in a familiar passage. I'll be reading the first sermon, gospel sermon that Brother Peter gave on that day and it's Acts 2, 22 through 38. Men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's set purpose and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. <clears throat> David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices, my body also will live in hope, because you will not abandon me to the grave 
nor will you let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Brothers, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was ahead, he spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to the grave, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of the fact. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen, Amen. Amen. John 14, verse 1 to 3 says, Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, you may be there also. Someone asked the question, are you sure you're going to heaven? Jesus has made a promise that if you believe, See, all you got to do is to believe, if you believe in my name, as the scripture says. He said, even though you die, that you will live again. I'm going that way, 319. I'm going that way. <clears throat> I heard of a land of joy and peace. And wonderful love, and wonderful love, a beautiful place of man, suns fair and skies ever bright, and skies ever bright, where all who believe the same if you stay forever shall stay. And having been saved by grace, let find I'm going that way. I'm going that way. I'm going that way. And Jesus the Savior, I adore, is with me each day. I'm clinging to him I never to stray Yes, singing his praises all day long I'm going that way The glorious news I'll tell and sing As onward I go I stay in sin, my Savior may know. My Savior may know. I want them to sing His praise above some beautiful day. For glory to Him who died for me, I'm going that way. I'm going that way I'm going that way And 
Jesus the Savior, I adore, is with me each day. Oh, I'm clinging to him, I never to stray. Yes, singing his praises all day long. I'm going that way. I know I shall meet him at the gate when trials are passed. Ah, I know I shall meet him face to face in glory at last. And though I believe that when we meet, well, the Lord will say, Trusting his soul, redeeming love, I'm going that way. Oh, I'm going that way. I'm going that way. Jesus, the <coughs> I adore with me each day. Oh, I'm clinging to Him, I never to stray. Yes, singing His praises all day long. I'm going that way. I'm going that way. I'm going that way. Going that way. And Jesus the Savior, I adore, is with me each day. Oh, I'm clinging to Him. I never to stray. Yes, singing his praises all day long. I'm going that way. If for the price we are swear, oh, after all labors are oh, 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 rest of our souls will be given, oh, on the eternal shore, home of the soul, beautiful home, and there we shall rest. Never to walk a faithful care from happy and bright and where Jesus is there and he is the light of in the storm and lonely are we we are sighing for hope longing for the beautiful home of the ransom beside the Christ Oh yes, a sweet message we made in it for the true children of God and where there will be no complaint in it Oh never a chasing run Home of the soul Beautiful home And there we shall rest Never to roam A faithful care Happy and bright Jesus is there And he is the light Of in the storm And lonely are we We are sighing for hope Longing for the beautiful home of the ransom beside the crystal sea, and soon the bright homeland adore on it. 
sing and we shall be hold a glad door. So lean on the Lord till the morning and trust till the night is gone. Home of the soul, beautiful home, and there we shall rest. Never to roam, happy and bright. Jesus is there. He is the light up in the storm. And lonely are we, we are sighing for home and longing for thee, beautiful home of. And some beside the quest, <coughs> Hymn number 394, first, first, second, and last verse after which we'll have a speaker, Brother Spence. Three, six, 694 to Canaan's land, I'm on my way, where the soul never dies. 694. First, second, and last verse, <coughs> after which you'll have Brother Spence. Let us sing. <coughs> to Canaan's land I am on my way with a soul, never die. My darkest night will turn to day. Where the sun never dies, no sun farewell, no tears, they must where all is, is love and the soul of man. Never die, our roses blooming and deformed, where the soul of man never die, and I will spend eternity where the soul of man never die. No sound, farewell, no tears, they must, where all is peace, is love, and the love, and the soul of man never dies, my life will in a deathless sleep where the soul of man never die and everlasting joys are away where the soul of man never die no sound Soul of man never die. I am on my way to the fair land where the soul of man never dies. Where there will be no parting hand where the soul of man. No sound, farewell, no tears, they mark, where all is peace and joy and love and the soul of man never dies. Different still be.
need no sad farewell there'll be no tear in night where all is peace and joy and love and the soul and never dies let the church say yeah Amen. Amen. God is certainly good. He's certainly been a blessing to us, uh, not just today, but all throughout this previous week. Amen. Uh, we certainly ought to thank God for everything that he, he continues to do in our lives daily. Amen. Amen. Certainly God is good all the time and all the time, even when we act no good. Even when when we don't do anything good, even when when the days are evil and we adhere to them, Amen. Uh, God is still good in spite of who we are, in spite of what we do, in spite of what we have done. God is still good, Amen. Amen. It is certainly a blessing to be be up here, be standing before you, just to share a word uh, with you this morning. I must first before we go ahead and. And really get into the word this morning. I must apologize. This past uh, week, uh, this past Saturday as a matter of fact, we actually were scheduled to uh, feed the hungry. But a decision, we had to make a decision. I made the decision uh, this past Sunday, late Sunday, um, that we had to reschedule um, because of some things that, that uh, I had just jumped. I know uh, Brother Vernon reminded me, he said, look man, we're doing it four times. I said, that's right. And picked the date and said, wait a minute. And a hundred things were going on yesterday. So certainly, church, it is my apologies that we had scheduled on yesterday and that we had to uh, reschedule. Amen. Um, but but prayerfully going forward, we'll be, I'll be better at uh, perceiving when stuff need to happen. Amen. 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 amen again. And certainly, uh, we had a good time. We were thankful last week we had Brother Brian Coleman down from the Newark Church of Christ and, and came down and, and certainly blessed us with the word and, and um, as y'all could tell back and forth me and him we got nothing but jokes for each other um, and it started to get into worship I had to look at him and say <laughs> because we both was just I I I we we ain't outside let's let's pause let's all right so we uh but but certainly I'm glad to be back in the pulpit amen mm hmm mm hmm and and, and amen and, and sister Lily it's good to have you back amen <laughs> amen. Amen. Let's 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 just be fine and be good with it. Amen. It's good to have you back, Sister Lily. Amen. 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 Certainly, certainly thankful for all in attendance. And if you are a guest, if you are here visiting, we certainly are honored guests. We're thankful to have you present with us. Amen. Amen. Y'all don't mind turning with me to Acts chapter two. That is Acts chapter two. Acts chapter two, verses twenty-two to through thirty-eight. Ever so thankful for the brethren that have led us in our worship service thus far, and even those who will lead us in our worship service even after the sermon. Um, God is, is good, and it's always good. Let, let me say it, it's always good to have men and women that will stand for Jesus. Amen? Amen. It, it certainly is good. So, y'all don't mind. Acts chapter 2. We'll begin at verse number 22 now. I have not been here. I've been in this pulpit in two weeks, and uh, next week, actually, a, a good friend of mine, y'all know, is actually Ty's godfather, brother Ty Johnson. He's gonna be up here, huh? Who I said? Pray for us for our memory. <laughs> <laughs> Nate's godfather Ty will be here last last year uh, the, and, and the year previous were just some scary times and, and thought that we were going to lose him and um, some tearful conversations he and I had and just thankful that God has blessed him to be back we certainly were praying for him here um, and so he said I'm being the area he says I gotta let the church know I'm still alive and God is still good so I said come on through bless us with a word doc so he's, he's going to be here next week I'm going to be here too um, because it's, it's, it's just good to see family Good to lay eyes on folk you haven't seen in a while Amen, Amen. Acts chapter 2 And we'll pick up at verse 22 Where the Bible says Men of Israel 
Listen to these words. Jesus the Nazarene, a man attested to you by God, with miracles and wonders and signs which God performed, performed through him in your midst, just as you yourselves know, this man God delivered, delivered over by the predetermined plan and foreknowledge of God. You nailed to a cross by the hands of godless men and put him to death. But God raised him up again, putting an end to the agony of death since it was impossible for him to be held by its power. For David says of him, I saw the Lord always in my presence, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart will be glad and my tongue exalted. Moreover, my flesh also will live in hope. Because you will not abandon my soul to Hades, nor allow your Holy One to undergo decay. You have made known to me the ways of life, you will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brethren, I may confidently say to you regarding the patriarch David that he both died and was buried. His tomb is with us this day. And so because he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn to him with an oath to, oath to seat one of his descendants on his throne, looked ahead and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ. That he was neither abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh suffer decay. This Jesus God raised up again, to which we are all witnesses. Therefore, having been exalted to the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured forth this which you both see and, he see and hear, for it was not David who ascended into heaven, but he says, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now, when they heard this, they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent, and each one of you be baptized or be immersed or be dipped in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And all God's children said, Amen. Have you ever been reading a book or watching a movie and then abruptly it ends and leaves you wondering what was supposed to happen next. The first time I saw Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, which is the first Lord of the Rings movie, I was expecting an epic movie of great proportions. It didn't disappoint, but I won't lie to you. At a certain point while I was looking at the clock, I was wondering how they would end the movie. Because two and a half hours had passed and I'm looking at the clock like how they going to wrap this up in ten minutes. Hmm. You see, I didn't know at the time that I saw it that, that it was the first of three movies. It wasn't just that it was a movie experience that needed fulfillment. It was like I couldn't be satisfied until I knew and understood what would take place next. As a matter of fact, it was like watching Avengers Infinity War. And by the way, if you've seen Endgame and you say anything to me about it, I promise you will not see a righteous man today. Amen. I just got to let you know, God's still working on me. Amen. But it's like watching the end of Avengers Infinity War and seeing that Thanos snapped his fingers and then the movie ended. It's, it's, it's everybody left the theater, some puzzled, some confused, but wondering what would happen next. Last week, historically, it's the first day or the first day of the week or the Sunday after the Passover that Jesus rose. And we celebrated Jesus conquering death. So today, 
we get an important conclusion that a person really needs to come to understand. If you'd lend me your heart and ears to this thought. And now what? Amen. And now what? Jesus rose. And now what? Amen. You know, sometimes, sometimes in, in the midst of in the midst of our, our lives, we, we go through some stuff and, and when we're at the it's like now what's gonna happen? Now what's next? Now what's going to take place? To, 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 last week was what some people call Easter, what a lot of people call Resurrection Sunday. And it was during that time uh, uh, after the Passover that Christ was crucified or that Friday of Passover that Christ was crucified, he was buried, and he rose the third day, which was the first day of the week. It's on that day, that particular first day of the week, that people all over remembered that he rose. Now, in truth, historically, the saints in the first century viewed the first day of the week as something special and set aside that time to worship the Lord. It's actually why we worship the Lord even this morning. What we see in Acts chapter 2 was another first day. It was 50 days after the Pentecost. It, Pentecost, it was the first day of the week. Thus, really, every Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. Y'all understand what I just Every Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. But to be completely honest, that's not enough of a reason as to why we assemble in worship that day. Amen. Like some books and some movies, it is all good to get excited about his resurrection, but that's only part of the story. There is a purpose behind why he died, why he was buried, and why he rose. And today, we're going to look at the second part within our scripture reading today. Here in the scripture reading, the Jews were in Jerusalem for the celebration of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit has filled the apostles, the twelve, as the Lord said that he would, as they were in the place that God told them to go back in Luke 24, verse 47, Acts chapter 1, verse 4 through 8. They all began to speak to the people and the people heard it in their own tongue or their own language. And in response, the Jews in the city were perplexed and some mocking them stated that the twelve were drunk. So Peter stands up, raises his voice and began to speak to them. Peter's sermon is filled with Hebrew Bible scripture or what we call Old Testament scripture explaining the fulfillment of the pro prophecy in Jesus or in Yeshua. This portion of Peter's sermon that we examine today is concise and very explanatory. He explains first and foremost who Jesus is in verse 22. He says, men of Israel, listen to these words. Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus the Nazarene, a man attested to you by God with miracles and wonders and sign which God performed through him in your midst just as you know. He was a man that was proven by what he did, by his miracles, by the wonders that he did, by the signs that he did. All of that was to attest to who Jesus the Messiah really was. Amen. Now, he, he makes the statement, all of you know it. Now, one thing that's important to know is that all that information, every Jew would know. Why? Because in spite of not having, not having text message or email or instant messenger or Instagram or, or YouTube or Facebook or anything that would say, look at what happened, uh, Jews would talk and share that information with each other and it would pass Individuals and as individuals pass when they hop on a boat cross overseas and they pass by somebody else and say, you heard about this Yeshua of Nazareth. This Yeshua who's doing these things down there. This Yeshua that, that, that the Talmudic writings that happened after that were commentary on the Old Testament but continued even after. Note Jesus is being a charlatan. I'm just saying they wrote about him. So everybody knew who Jesus was more importantly they knew that he died as well 
So everybody is aware of this. So when Peter goes and he says this, he's not saying brand new information. He's telling them what it is. As a matter of fact, he goes further in verse 23 and explains God's plan. He said, this man delivered over by the predetermined plan and foreknowledge of God, you nailed to a cross by the hands of godless men and put him to death. It was the plan of God. It was predetermined and known before it took place. If you go to the scriptures, we were in Genesis this morning. And if you go and you look at Genesis chapter 3 and get to verse 15, he says, The seed of, 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 of the woman shall crush your head. You'll bite its heel, but it will crush your head. So this was spoken of in scripture way before Jesus was ever on the earth. It's one of the reasons why Jesus always spoke of his death and would say things like, if the son of man be raised up, I will draw all men unto myself. And John It's one of the reasons in Matthew 16 or Mark chapter 8, he would even say, and he's explaining that I'm going to go to Jerusalem and I'm going to be killed and I'm, I'm, I'm going to raise the third day. And, and that's when we see Peter flip out and rebuke him and he has to say, get behind me, Satan. It's one of the reasons why Jesus has to say, the only only sign you will be given will be the sign of Jonah. For three days and three nights he was in the earth. Now mind you, Jesus, the third day he rose. Jonah the third day was spit out on the sea. I wish I had more time to get into how time is calculated according to the Jews. I don't. Holler at me after we talk about it. But he said everything that's going to, when he talked about everything, he said this is how I'm going to die. This is how long I'm going to be dead. I'm going to get back up again. Everything he said would happen, happened. So now the Jews have to look back and say, wait a minute. Are you saying that he did everything he said he was going to do. You know, if I pause for a moment, there are some in this world who would dare say that Jesus is a charlatan, that all he did was look in Hebrew scripture, what we call the Old Testament, and say, oh, well, I'm just going to do that. There's no way in the world, and I'm going to be honest with you, there's no way in the world I could predict my own death if I could die by crucifixion or by being beheaded. That's precisely what Jesus did. He could have been beheaded like Paul was. Hello? Like some of you. But he said, I'm going to be crucified. Amen, son. But he said it over and over and over again. He continued to speak about his coming death. Continued to speak about what was going to happen. And then it did happen. Amen. Amen. Well, let's, 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 let's go on back to the text here. The Bible, the Bible says, further, that they nailed him to the cross by the hands of godless men, by the hands of the Romans. The Romans who didn't serve God, but they served so many gods, it didn't make sense. They didn't serve. He says, you, 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 you connived and you work this thing out. In an evil manner to crucify Jesus. You did this. So he's saying to them, this is what you did. And y'all don't even y'all didn't even know who he was. All of this was for a purpose now. But the people, when they were doing it, they didn't realize it. Can I talk to you real quick and say that God can use foolishness that other people mean? Y'all ain't heard me. Amen. Sometimes folk can have something mean and ill intended for you. And God can take the foolishness that was meant for you and flip it around and say, now I'm going to use it for what I wanted to. Amen. Y'all hear what I'm saying? That God can take foolishness. God can take jealousy, which is really what it was. He can take their jealousy and say, now I'm going to use this to fulfill what I said I was going to do. God is good. He further explains in the very next verse, in verse 24, that, that God raised him up. For a purpose. The Bible in verse 24 says. God raised him up again. Putting an end. To the agony. Of death. That's it verse 24. An end to the agony of death. Since it was impossible. For him to be held. By its power. You see. Can I talk to y'all for just, just a... You see, Lord Jesus, sometimes we get so excited about the resurrection and miss the crucifixion. 
So sometimes, I, I might even put it up on Facebook, I did put it up on Facebook this week, that we have a, a, a very a, a foolish way of looking at the resurrection because everybody wants a he got up moment on Sunday. But nobody wants to carry their cross and then be crucified on it. But you can't get to the resurrection unless you be crucified. Unless you pick up your, like he said, this is Matthew 16, this is Mark 7. He said, take up your cross and follow me. That was literally, follow me, I'm going to death. You coming with me or what? But some folk want a resurrection, thinking they're going to have a Velcro crucifixion. You know, you tear yourself down when it's too much for you, amen? Or it's just rope, you could slide in, slide right back out. Or like it's velvet, you just tie yourself and it's just nice. I said velvet, like it's silk, amen? Y'all with me, amen? But some folk want to want a comfy cruci crucifixion ain't easy. This life ain't fitting to be easy, amen? Nothing about this life is going to be easy. And if we understand that as we walk with Christ, we walk, see, it's different when you walk for, you know, sometimes I get so, so frustrated with, 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 with members of the church, not y'all. But sometimes I get so frustrated with members of the church because sometimes without realizing it, we can, we can put an unreasonable expectation. Like, I can't wait to get to heaven. You're going to have to die to get there. Amen. But the thing that held us back was sin. So on the cross, he died to it for stuff that he didn't die, that he didn't do. So he died for our sins and broke the hole that sin had over our lives. But in the resurrection, he broke the hole that death had on everybody. Because death was it. So by breaking that hole and being the first to resurrect, Lord, you get to Romans and you read it, you find that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. And that in him breaking the hold of death, now we got access to the Father. So when we die, we don't have much to worry about if we're in Christ. Amen? Amen. You see, you got to get into his body to receive that type of a reward. Lord, none of us in truth are trying to get to heaven. We really trying to get a reward. We really trying to hear, well done, thy good and faithful. Amen. Which means you had to have been doing something to get a well done sticker. Amen. 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 So he says, he ended the agony of death. Death was impossible to hold him. <laughs> Walk with me a moment. Amen. He explains in the next few verses. He explains... That God raised him for a purpose and explains via David's words in verses 25 through 28, noted on the screen. He says that generations, that David penned generations before Jesus came, that all of this was prophesied in time past. You know, the scripture from Genesis to Revelation is compiled by roughly about 40 people in the span of about 1500 years. And there are some who would say it's all fiction. But, but there's something that is repeated about fiction that humans create. You see, human beings have not been able to produce fiction as good and as telling as the Holy Bible. Y'all don't understand me. I love Indiana Jones. I love every movie that came about. Raiders of the Lost Ark. The Temple of Doom. That's my favorite. I love uh, uh, The Last Crusade. I love um, even the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull that came out a few years ago. But you want to know something that's interesting. Indiana Jones and Raiders of the Lost Ark was such a great movie. But here's the truth. If you take Indiana Jones out of the story, the story still happens how it happens. Ron laughing because he understands. It's called a plot hole. Because if Indiana Jones was never in the story, the Nazis would have eventually found the Ark of the Covenant. They would have opened the Covenant and they would have died just like they did when Indiana Jones was in the story. He has, there's no point in him even being, I'm just saying it's a plot hole. Did y'all know? And, and a number of us, we love the Marvel movies. Amen? 
Something that I, 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 if you've never read comic books, you should understand that there was Civil War I and there was Civil War II. And if you don't know that, you'll, you'll look and say, oh, Civil War, like, like they, they just created. But you know, there was one big problem with the Civil War. The original Civil War was what the movie's about. Is, well, hold up, when you get to Infinity War, Thanos says, we're going to destroy half the universe because all the resources are, are, are not enough. So if we destroy half of them, they'll last for everybody. And in the comic books, many, 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 many years ago, people read it and said, hold up. If Thanos had all the infinity stones and could do whatever he wanted, why didn't he double up the resources? So then when they make the movie, everybody leaves the movie and they say the same thing. And the people who read the comic books was like, y'all thought it was going to be different. It's a huge plot hole. How that does not make sense. But I want y'all to follow something. From Genesis 1 and 1 all the way to Revelation 22. There is no plot hole in the entirety of scripture. Some folk want to say that they are, but see, when you pull something out like brother said, we can't trust the Bible because if, if, if we trust the Bible, then we can't eat shellfish. I said, why did you stop reading at Leviticus? Keep reading. Get to Mark 7. Get to Acts chapter 10. You'll find out he made everything clean. But if you caught up on just this little bitty soundbite and don't read the whole story, you get it all jobbled up together. All of this, 40 writers who didn't know each other could write something down on paper for generations to come. It all fall in line. It all makes sense. Nothing about it wrong. So that now Peter in preaching can say, David a long, long, long time ago wrote this. And this is exactly who he was talking about. And you're looking, you got to say, huh, ain't God good. God knew what he was doing when he was penning this whole thing throughout. God knew what he was doing when he had, when he used man like a pen and put it on paper. It's, it's, it's interesting that even though David, one of those writers who was for show, for show dead, when all of this took place, wrote about something he never saw. He then explains, Peter. That the apostles were witnesses of God's glory. Verse 32 in the text and following would say, This Jesus God raised up again, to which we are all witnesses. Therefore, having been exalted to the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured forth this which you both see and hear. That means... That, that, that while we're sitting here communicating with you, you got to go back to the beginning of the, 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 the scripture reading. They, they said, we saw him. He ascended. He's at the right hand of God. He's the reason that his Holy Spirit even poured out on us. This is what Peter's speaking of. He's the reason that is poured out that now all of you who are accompanied here or are, are present here while we're preaching, you're looking and the statement was before 22, how is it that we understand what these men are saying? Because all of them came from different places, understanding a different language. And they all turned and said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We understand everything that he's saying. All of us in our own tongue. And when they said, now they got to be drunk. You got to imagine all of these people from different parts of the world that spoke different languages. That now they're looking and saying, how in the world? Do all of us hear and understand what they're saying? They must be drunk. So that meant, because sometimes folk like to talk about speaking in tongues. But they don't talk about hearing in ears. Because they said maybe they're drunk. And Peter, who spoke and every man heard it in his own tongue, which is actually what the scripture says. Heard them and said, look here, they're not drunk. Matter of fact, they all spoke different languages but were able to communicate with each other. Because God made it all. The, the understand, do you see the power of God? He says, if not for him going back, you wouldn't be able to even see what's taking place right now today. So on this day, with all of us speaking and somehow understand, it is only by God, by his Holy Spirit, that all of us can understand each other. 
Y'all follow? By his Holy Spirit. It's the only way that happened is if Jesus went back to where he said he was going to go. Therefore, he went back to where he said he was going to be. This Jesus is now Lord and Messiah. The same one that you crucified. It is not hard. It is not hard to imagine that the people standing there are astonished because they've heard of everything that Jesus was doing. They understood as people would pass by and tell them what was going on. They understood what Jesus had done and what Jesus was doing. It's not hard to imagine, it's not even hard to grasp really, that the Jews understood the scripture and said, hmm. They understood the scripture and they understood the logic. So if you put yourself in their shoes, no doubt they're hearing Peter say these words and they're like, wait a minute. He said Psalm 16 verses 8 through 11. He said that and now we can actually see Jesus had to have actually done these things. Jesus was precisely who he said he was going to be. You mean to tell me that David wrote this all them years ago? We've understood it from when we were little kids, even up until now. And now we see its fulfillment in who we called at one point a charlatan. Hmm. You see, they were waiting on the conclusion of the story too. And to find out now that the Messiah that they had been looking for, the Messiah that they were waiting to show up, that that was Jesus. If we run back to the beginning of the story, they talk of all the miracles and wonders and signs. No doubt they would have heard about all of these things. Hearing this might have been hard for some to find out that the Messiah who they might have even said, he need to get up out of here. The Messiah, they might have even cast a vote to say he needs to die. The same man who they were looking for was the one who they crucified so they ask a question that most when you find out earth shattering news would ask the scripture says now when they heard this they were pierced to the heart they were convicted convicted because they like this is all true love mm. convicted and they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brethren, what shall we do? The real question they're asking there is, and now what? Now what do we do? The point of this sermon is actually found right there in verse 37. They asked the apostles what they should do. They finally believed that Jesus was the Christ. Jesus was the Messiah. Hallelujah. So it makes sense that they asked the ones who explained from the scriptures who Jesus was, what they need to do next. And their conclusion is actually found in the next verse, what Peter says. But historically, we, we, we got to back up. Amen. We got to back up just a little bit. Because Peter could have said something that, 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 that he feels to say. Peter could have uh, uh, said something that, 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 doesn't, that doesn't bide with it. Y'all have heard that just believe in your heart. And receive Jesus into your heart and you good. But Peter didn't say that. Y'all have heard what well, we'll just say the sinner's prayer and, and you're fine. But, but Peter didn't say that. As a matter of fact, Peter did what Jesus said he did over and over. You read the gospel of John, you'll find, I don't do anything on my own initiative. But as the Father gives me, that's what I do. So in the same way, Peter doesn't say how he feels. Doesn't say what he thinks. Doesn't say anything like that. Peter repeats something that he heard in Mark 16, 15, and 16, the Bible says, Jesus said to them, go into all the world, preach the gospel to all creation. He who believes and has been baptized shall be saved, but he who disbelieves or disobeys shall be condemned. Pause a moment. So when we get back to the next verse in Acts 2, he says, repent, and each one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. What he said was turning away from how you were living. Repent. 
You were living thinking you knew it all. Living thinking that you knew better than even God. You were living thinking that God might put something in front of you, but because he wanted precisely what you wanted, I'm going to do what I want. Turn away from that. Live for Jesus. Live for God by doing what he said. Turn away from that understanding. He then says, be dipped. Be immersed by the authority of Jesus Christ. Then he gives the purpose statement for the forgiveness of your sins, for salvation. God will then give you the gift of the indwelling Holy Spirit. You are not in this life by yourself if you've obeyed the gospel. Amen. 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 Yeah, 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 must not have heard me. You see, no matter what we go through in life, if you've obeyed the gospel, if you've done precisely what this here verse has said, for the forgiveness of sins, not to join the church. Hello? Not an outward sign of an inward, no. This is doing what God said, do. So if you've done that, then the gift inside of you is the indwelling Holy Spirit. Which means you don't walk in this world by yourself. That means when you walk in some way, God already there, but he's an advocate for you. Y'all follow? You're not in this world by yourself. Huh. He said, all of this, church, I have a mind. I have a made up mind to share the gospel, the good news message of Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus came to save. Amen. Jesus came to save. He accomplished the defeat of sin on the cross. He accomplished the defeat of death in the resurrection. And he commanded faith plus immersion to receive salvation. Immersion, show enough ain't to join a church. Immersion or being dipped is not to show people what God already did on the inside part. It would make then what Jesus said in Mark 16 a lie. It would make Jesus speaking idly and God ain't never said a word that was idle. Amen. Immersion is not to say that I did it. You see, faith plus immersion is doing what Jesus said so you can get what Jesus said you would get, which is a new life. Amen. So the final question I have regarding this is and now what? That's the title. Now what? And now, what? What you going to do? Amen. The conclusion of the story, the conclusion of your story can be right here, right now. The question is, will you come to faith? Will you come to be immersed? Be buried in water, then raised to a brand new life to live in this world. Amen. Amen. The question is, what you going to do now? Now what? Lord, there might be many of us, there, there are many of us that have already obeyed the gospel. And you might be in this position where you might not have always carried your cross. Hello? You might be in that position where some days are better than most. And some days you don't want to do what God said do. Some days you might just want to do everything you want to do. Amen. Some days you might just be like, I'm not even feeling this whole Jesus thing. Amen. You might be just feeling like, I'm tired. I'm sick of this. I got to love people in spite of what they did me wrong. Fall back, listen. The gracious part of God when you've already obeyed the gospel, the Bible says in 1 John chapter 1, verses 7 through 9, that the blood of Christ continues to clean. Y'all heard what I said. That means once, once you're in, once you've obeyed, the blood of Christ continually cleanses you. It's nothing to get back in line. You just got to make the decision to stand up. Amen. And say, I'm going to walk with Jesus once more. 
You might be in that spot where it's tough, it's hard, life is weighing heavy on you. But look, if you've already obeyed the gospel, why not just get back in line with Jesus? It ain't easy. Hello? It never was. Can I tell you, it ain't easy for me. And I got to study this thing. I got to teach and preach this thing. I said I could be, you know, it's, it's something when some folk will sometimes tell you, all you got to do is pray, brother. God is with you. And I look at them and be like, I know. <laughs> if anybody know, I do. <laughs> y'all silly, y'all laughing. But, <laughs> but you want to know something? The same God that I preach about is the same God I serve. And I know because sometimes I step out of line. But I know if I get right back in line, I can keep walking with him. And as that scripture says, the blood of Christ cleanses us. Y'all follow? You might be in that spot where it's rough right now. It's hard right now. Tears might regularly be flowing. It might feel like you, you're giving your all and nothing's coming of it. But trust and believe God sees you. God sees what you do. So now what? Now? It's time to get back in line with it. It's time to let his blood cleanse you one more time. Amen? Amen. And listen, if you're here this morning and you've not obeyed, you've not obeyed the gospel, then right now, it's time to come to Jesus. Right now, it's time to come out the aisle. It's time to stand up, come out the aisle. Come on up here. I will ask you one simple question. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? And if you do, you simply say, I believe that he is. Or you say yes. Or you say affirmative for our military folk. Amen. But you say, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And today, we will baptize you in water for the remission of your sins. For the forgiveness of your sins. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Today is the day. When they heard it, they said, what are we supposed to do? Now what? And he says, repent and be baptized. By the authority of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Let today be day one of your brand new life. So the question is, will you come? Will you come right now? The water is ready. And you know what's cool? We done put a plastic cover on it. So now ain't no bugs in there. It's clean, clean, clean. Amen? Amen? We got the clothes. You ain't even got to get your clothes wet. We got clothes back there you can put on. But today is the day to be dipped in water for the forgiveness of your sins. Will you say yes to Jesus? Why don't you come? We're going to stand and sing a hymn of invitation. Give you the opportunity to march out the aisle. Come on down here. I'm simply going to ask you a question. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? And if you do, we will baptize you today as we together stand and we sing. There's a fountain free, tis for you and me. Let us haste, oh haste, to the bridge. Tis a fountain of love for source above and he bids us all freely drink oh will you come will you come to the fountain free We have one 
who has come forward to put Christ on in baptism. Amen. We have mamas. We have Zania. Zania. Zania Dixon is here and she says she wants to put Christ on in baptism. So Zania, I'm going to ask you a question. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Yes. Amen. She said yes. Amen. Amen. God is good. In a moment, we're going to take her in the back. We're going to get her changed. Uh, I know we got clothes small enough. I know Sister Doris is in tears right now because God has just blessed her house. Amen. Amen. To have one child obey the gospel, but to have both of them. Amen. Amen. It's certainly a blessing. Amen. So, Zanai, you go ahead go right through those doors. And we're going to baptize you today. Let the church say amen. amen. That's, 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 that's a beautiful thing. Amen. In a moment, we're going to have... Um, we're going to have um, our brothers, they're going to uh, lead us in, in communion, but we're going to make sure we baptize her before this day is out. Amen? Amen. 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 Brother Murph, if you don't mind leading us in communion, sir. Amen. Can we go ahead and cut one, two verses of him, page 120, page 120, first and last verse, after which the Lord shall with the sir. Savior suffered pain and agony, freely bore it all. I with him might live between two hearts of sin and self-destructed He bore it all that I might live. Jesus bore it. Shining faith, he bore it all that I might live. I stood to die. Freely took my place, he bore it all that I might live. I live between two thieves, a crucified the Son of God, he bore it all that I might live. He bore it all, see his shining face, he bore it all that I might live. Condemned to die, freely took my place. He bore it all that I might live. Amen. Amen. What a wonderful occasion. Now, one come forward to put the Lord on in baptism. Amen. 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 Uh, we come to the portion of our service where we remember, we remember the sacrifice that was made. Bible reads, 
seats.
Just a, a few announcements. The first announcement, I'm proud to say, our new sister in Christ. Amen. Amen. Sister, sister Dixon, you and your mother got the same problem me and my brother got. <laughs> that my wife and my mother got. When they say sister Dixon, y'all both like, yes. <laughs> amen. Amen. But we're certainly thankful. God is in the blessing business. Amen. So we're thankful, certainly thankful. I know, I know, I know the family is proud. I know I saw her from the moment she came up and my eyes, I was here with her, but my eyes were zeroed in on Doris. I'm like, and she's sitting there trying to hold back. I'm like, let it go. Let them tears flow. Amen. God is good. Amen. God is good all the time. Amen. Amen. Just a, a few announcements that I, I, I'll share. Actually, they are noted in your bulletin. If you don't have a copy, I will certainly uh, uh, share those as well. But uh, let's keep in mind, of course, coming up next, uh, next, Lord Jesus, that bright. It's going to be a bright event. Y'all got to be here. <laughs> Saturday, May 11th. Uh -huh. From 8 until 12 noon, we're going to have a good time at our Women's Day. Amen. As a matter of fact, today after services, Dominique's having a meeting with the, with the women here that we might, uh, uh, I think that's the final. It's going to be on the other side in the secondary that that meeting will take place. Amen? Amen. Um, certainly, we have just another event that's up on the board, actually, May 24th. It actually, if I'm correct, that's the last Saturday this month. The King's Church of Christ will also be having their Ladies' Day uh, this month as well. One other announcement, I want to share this right quick. Um, the Gospel Broadcasting Network will be broadcasting here in our area, um, from Philadelphia to Atlantic City on, uh, on local channel. This is regular antenna, antenna TV. 
um, WSJT TV, chat, that's channel 15.4. Channel 15.4, don't worry about the letters, channel 15.4. Or get a copy of today's bulletin. Um, this is 24 hours a day Bible content. Bible focused content. And uh, local, local congregations will be filmed in the commercials. I did our commercial this past week on Monday. So, yeah, amen. So when it's so when it's done, it's going to be on that it's going to be on that channel um, every half hour. It's only two congregations that done done it thus far. Media is one. We did the other one, and they kind of was like, "Oh man, it's going to be cool." So I'm like, "It's going to be so so so." We got our commercial out the way, amen. And they they looking to film ten spots from that. So you going you going to see? I, I look sharp. I think I think I think I think I look sharp. I had to represent for Camden. I'm like, yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, had I known, I might have wore the tuxedo. I, I ain't do that though. But um, but um, certainly that's a film that's channel fifteen point four. That's on regular AR antenna TV. So if you have a DTV box or digital TV, you'll be able to see it. It's not on cable as of yet. That's going to take some work. We'll share as the months come about. Uh, uh, come on about that. Um, Brother Chet actually has an announcement um, regarding the movie Kingdom. And Brother Chet, if you wouldn't mind sharing. It is a, a good movie. Um, manhood is under attack by Satan. Um, and so a lot of things are, so, so this movie is focused on real manhood. Amen. Biblical based manhood. Amen. Um, we, we, we sometimes don't talk enough about it in our society, but, but certainly we need more stronger godly men that we might have stronger godly homes. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Just to, at this time, we're going to have a welcome to all of our visitors in the house. I, 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 I see, I see my, my, my good f f friends and, and family. I'm going to call y'all family now because y'all from the Collinswood Church of Christ. Always good to see y'all every time y'all come up. Amen. amen, amen, amen. Let's certainly give them a warm round of applause and amen. And, then, and make sure we give them the right hand of fellowship afterwards. Amen. Amen, amen. amen. They can they folk that's just next door. Like just next, like 15 minutes next door. Amen. Down the street, round the corner, down the street, round the corner, down the street. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Round the corner again. Uh, these are all the announcements I have. Of course, Wednesday we have our in-depth Bible study at 7 p.m. And uh, uh, Thursday we normally have our, our family prayer at 7.30 p.m. And, and y'all pray for y'all pray for me and Dominique that we get this call this week. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Um, and next week, the May 18th will be, matter of fact, this may change. This will not. The third Saturday this month, because the week before is our Women's Day. And men, we're going to be here, amen? amen. Protecting, serving, amen? Amen, amen. amen. yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, what's up, what's up, amen? That's what, that's what I'm talking about. So, a nursing home singing. <sighs> I can't take y'all nowhere. So... May 18th, third Saturday at 2 p.m. We'll have our nursing home singing as well. Those are all the announcements I do have. Of course, on the bulletin, it does have the website to download the, uh, our app for Android devices as well as for our iPhones as well. Um, these are all the announcements I do have. We're going we gonna, to we gonna stand before, before, before we stand. So now, come here.
Ready, let's pray. Our merciful God in heaven, indeed, we are very grateful for your loving kindness unto your children. We thank you for this sweet fellowship of today. We thank you for the words of admonition. We thank you for a new birth in Christ Jesus. We therefore commit her into your divine care, asking for your protection, wisdom, and guidance, that as she has put in Christ today, may the indwelling spirit of Christ continue to guide her, that she might not stray, even though we are being surrounded by so great a crowd of witnesses, that in all her life, O oh Lord, she will be an example to others, in order that they may see the need to obey your gospel. Amen. While pleading and praying concerning our families, we are asking you, O oh Lord, may you continue to empower the men, empower the women, empower the children, that we may stand up to show the world that you are our Father. Amen. As we have entered a new week, may you, O oh Lord, bless us, grant us favor in our businesses, in our schools, in all areas of life, Amen. that we might continue to be re-equipped in order to stand firm in your word. Amen. We say glory, honor, adorations be unto your wonderful name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.